Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Tonight on Our News, what's next for the FNM? One leadership hopeful says it can't be business as usual. A man killed by his stepfather. And the transport minister slams conditions at the road traffic department. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. Topping news tonight, ahead of tonight's Free National Movement Central Council meeting, possible leadership contender Dr. Dwayne Sands says the party has no hope of regaining the favor of the Bahamian people if it continues with business as usual, even when it comes to the party's leadership. This as he also hinted at his own aspirations. Jasmine Brown reports. Brutally honest comments from a former minister in the Minutes administration came hours before the party held a council meeting. Many people would want to be a fly on the wall at tonight's council meeting and all FNM council meetings as we deliberate the way forward. Um, but these are internal matters. Uh, I suspect that it will be a lively meeting and... Um, it is my hope, it is my belief that the Free National Movement will understand what needs to be done uh, in order to regain the uh, trust and support of the general public in order to win back the government. When it comes to his assessment of what went wrong for the FNM at the polls last month, Dr. Sands was not short on words. You know, clearly uh, things that uh, we did not do well that resulted in uh, either a number of our supporters staying home or persons that may have voted for the FNM previously voting for the Progressive Liberal Party. And uh, the first thing you have to do is you've got to claim it. You've got to acknowledge your missteps or your mistakes. And he did not stop there as he said the dismissive and almost contemptuous attitude was not a good look for the party. He added there were also a lot of unfulfilled promises without proper and transparent explanations. When it comes to how the party was led, San said on Guardian Radio earlier this week that it was very clear that the former FNM government was not a popular administration. He said the government had a very unpopular leader and there was a tremendous amount of pushback on the ground as people complained during their campaigning. He also said the former administration was too much like former U.S. President Donald Trump when asked about Dr. Minnis. It cannot be business as usual. Dr. Sands was also asked if he has plans on running for the leadership of the Free National Movement, but did not say whether he will present himself at the party's November convention. When I will make that decision, at what point I'll throw my name in the hat, uh, that's the best kept secret in the Bahamas. Um, so let's see how this all plays out. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. In other news, a man was shot and killed by his stepfather, who is an off-duty police officer, last night. Police press liaison officer ASP Audley Peters says police got the call shortly after 11 p.m. When they arrived on the scene, they found the man on the floor of an apartment complex with gunshot wounds to the torso. The preliminary investigations reveal that the male whose mother lived at the residence came to the residence and she, she let him in and an, a verbal altercation ensued and as a result a police officer who was at the residence was in another room. He heard the altercation and came out. When he came to the living room he met the young man with a knife at his mother's throat. The man is believed to be in his early 30s. Peter says the officer called the police but was forced to take matters into his own hands. He added this incident has been classified as a police-involved shooting. The officer called the, uh, the police, and, but prior to the police coming to the scene, he had to use his service weapon to protect his, his life and the, wife, the life of his wife. Well, Transport Minister Joe Beth Colby Davis blasting conditions at the Road Traffic Department's headquarters. Following a tour of the facility, the new minister says many staffers want a new building. Jared Higgs has more. I am so disheartened and discouraged by the working conditions 
care at the stadium that the staff have to endure. During a walkthrough with senior road traffic officials on Thursday, Minister of Transport and Housing, Jo Beth Kobe Davis, expressed shock as she examined office spaces that were often taken up with boxes, some containing files and license plates. Kobe Davis was especially dismayed at the state of the controller's office, which resembles a makeshift cubicle. The controller office looks like a cupboard, um, and he takes in persons and, and has various meetings there. That's a representation of the government. That represents us, and, and right now it represents me as a minister. Road Traffic Department headquarters was relocated from the Clarence A. Bain building to the eastern grandstand of Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium in October 2016. Then controller Ross Smith wrote in a press release that the move was due to the devastating impact of Hurricane Matthew. Road traffic officials say it was only meant to be for four months, but it turned into five years and many employees are fed up. We request them to be at their best and provide the best services, but how could one be encouraged to provide the best services working in such conditions? Colby Davis says plans and drawings for a new building are on hand and will be taken before cabinet. She says if it's up to her, the move would happen within six to eight months. We have a property that has been identified and we just want to review them and consider if we could possibly get them into cabinet and have it approved so that we can look to providing an efficient building for the entire road traffic department. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Higgs. The second woman to become Speaker of the House of Assembly is vowing to be fair to both sides of the political divide as she settles into her new role. Kyle Joaquin sat down with Patricia DeVoe. Not to showboat. It's not about me. It's about the people. You can now address her as Madam Speaker. Born and raised in Bamboo Town, Patricia DeVoe has gone from being a civil servant to now Speaker of the House of Assembly. Her aim, to be fair to both sides. I plan to be a very, very, very fair speaker. And I think it's important for the Bahamian people to hear the decisions of both sides and see what best serves them to push this country forward. The role of House Speaker has been quite controversial over the past few years, with former Speaker House and Mutri railing against government over numerous issues, including the separation of powers and the condition of his office. So I'm going to do things a little differently, but I will have some fire in me, but the fire will be best served. Like I'm going back to the Bahamian people. They have an expectation. We are a country in crisis and we have to bring the country out of crisis. She took a few minutes to speak with us during the first day of this new job in the office she has plans to transform. But living in the constituency she represents, DeVoe says her first priority is the people of Bamboo Town. What benefits them indeed benefits me because I am a constituent as well. So I say this to say, I have the best interests of the people of Bamboo Town in my heart, in my soul, in my spirit, on my mindset, first. They come first. As the second woman to sit in the chair as Speaker of the House of Assembly, DeVoe says she certainly hopes many others will come after her. So I say to every little girl, dare to dream. Dare to dream. Very inspiring words from the House Speaker. Tomorrow night, another sit-down interview, this one with the President of the Senate. But for now, from Parliament Square for our news, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Meanwhile, former Cabinet Minister Leslie Miller calling it a tragedy that his daughter, Leslie Bryce, could not maximize her fullest potential in the Davis administration as a minister. Bryce was one of the more popular Progressive Liberal Party candidates. However, due to her husband being a holder of a gaming license, she's unable to serve as a cabinet minister. What has happened is a tragedy. I'm certain I believe she has a contribution to make to this country. She is the member of parliament. For that constituency, I think she's going to do well. She's going to do her job. I make sure of that. And if she don't do it, I'll do it. Um, I expect her to do what is necessary on behalf of the people. There has been speculation of a diplomatic appointment, but that remains to be seen. Miller described his daughter as a strong businesswoman with a heart for the people, adding she will do well for her constituents and the country. You serve the Bahamian people. As a member of parliament, you don't need to serve your constituents, you serve all Bahamians. I think she's going to do what she needs to do on behalf of the people. I look forward to her doing some things. All of her colleagues doing what is right in the best interest of our country. 
and I wish all them well. I wish the Prime Minister and his team well. There's an awesome job to do, and I believe they can step to the plate and get it done. If not, the same fate that followed these guys will fall on us. If you don't do your job, you can be gone. Well, breezy conditions in the capital this morning. Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center with the latest. Thanks, Christina. And first look at weather tonight is brought to you by Ports International. Trusted medical supplies for a better quality of life. Beautiful conditions outside our studios. Just a few clouds. Temperatures in the low to mid 80s. 83 outside our studios right now. We'll call it pleasant. Your winds are out of the east at six knots and your feel like temperature near the mid 80s. Just a nice chamber of commerce day around the islands. Lots of sunshine, a nice easterly breeze bringing in a very comfortable air mass. But it's still a bit on the warm side. Temperatures will continue to fall off later on tonight. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come on our news, the Rastafarian community's high hopes for the new government. And later, the life and legacy of guitarist Joseph Spence. Stay with us. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. After the Minnis administration failed to fulfill its promise to establish a medical marijuana industry and expunge the records of those convicted for possession of small amounts of marijuana, a respected voice in the Rastafarian community says he's confident the Davis administration will get the job done. Berthony McDermott reports. My government will introduce a regulatory framework for the cannabis industry. Tuesday's speech from the throne saw the Davis administration commit to the former government's promise of bringing cannabis legislation, but with no details. I was hoping they say more, but I say again, it's take us now to put our uh, words and our demands to this administration and see where it go from there. Rastafarian priest Rithman McKinney says while he has faith in the government, the community is tired of being persecuted. We're hoping that this administration respect the Rastafarian constitutional rights which is the sacramental rights. And also we see we want um, a stake in the industry going forward. It's been a long road for the Rastafarian community, which has been advocating for marijuana reform and the expungement of records for those convicted of possession of small quantities of the drug. In October 2020, the Rastafarian community sought government intervention to address issues of injustice, prejudice, and ongoing discrimination for its use of marijuana as a sacramental herb. In 2019, Wayne Monroe QC filed a writ in the Supreme Court on their behalf, seeking damages and the expungement of all Indian hemp-related convictions since 1963. Yeah, I hope we have a chance to see the new um, Minister of National Security, um, and I hope that um, they could respect our rights. In January 2020, the final report from the Marijuana Commission was tabled in Parliament with fierce pushback from the Christian community. McKinney says he is confident in the Davis administration. I believe we should see some positive change. Now the Rastafarian priest says he's not waiting for the Davis administration to come and consult with them. He says he'll be knocking on their doors in the next few weeks. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Philip Davis says the government has asked Atlantis to reconsider making unvaccinated employees pay for weekly COVID-19 tests. Atlantis implemented the policy on October 1st. Davis says the government is concerned about how the extra cost will affect employees. Not every employee is working seven days. Um, they, are on, they are being rotated two, three days a week. And so when they get whatever that salary is to deduct the cost of, of a test from that sum, leaves them very little. Davis, who met with Atlantis President Audrey Oswell on Tuesday, says he was informed the new policy was the result of a mandate by the resort's owner, Brookfield Asset Management, that all employees be fully vaccinated. So we asked them to consider um, reconsider whether the employees ought to pay. But it was designed, one, to keep people 
on their job in regard to their corporate mandate, and they want to also be compliant with the wishes of the government not to mandate vaccination. And thirdly, they wanted to ensure that persons appreciate the need to be vaccinated. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by RF, your local investment bank. This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com. When our news returns, a new documentary explores the life of Bahamian guitarist Joseph Spence and new Rev Ambassador Shawnee Miller-Rebo looking ahead to the World Championships. The details when our news returns. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. This is our news. Welcome back. The life of legendary guitarist Joseph Spence is being celebrated in a new RTV Originals documentary. Jillian Gray sat down with musician Fred Ferguson and producer Kevin Taylor to discuss the virtuoso from Small Hope. When you listen to what Spence does as a guitar player and analyze what he is doing, it is phenomenal. Described as one of the best there was, Joseph Spence is vastly underappreciated. His family and friends in Andrus were some of the first to experience his musical gift, but he wasn't recognized locally or internationally until the Smithsonian came to capture sounds of the islands. Now another documentary will tell the story of the man and the music. As Bahamians, I want us to celebrate this world-renowned musician that Kevin and I, along with RTP, have been fortunate to be able to, to showcase. As a boy growing up in Acklands, Ferguson recalled how he won the National Arts Festival for his rendition of a Spence song. Producer Kevin Taylor says fans around the world share the same endearment. He gave traditional hymns his own Bahamian and bluesy twist to it, and I think that's what endeared him um, to the rest of the guitar playing world. And we have we have uh, people in this uh, film in England, Japan, all over Europe, the USA, that are huge fans of Spence and devoted followers. The folktale goes that Spence learned to play from the spirits in the graveyard and wouldn't play after 12 as that's when the spirits came out. One resident from Andrus swears that if Spence played after midnight, the strings on his guitar would pop. Instead of calling on the spirits to help me learn, I enlisted the help of Ferguson and Taylor. And back to the first one. <laughs> now, I'm no Joseph Spence or Fred Ferguson, but I definitely got an appreciation for the craft. And that's what Ferguson hopes this documentary gives to all Bahamians. We hope that we'll open their eyes to show that we have such rich heritage musically, culturally in the Bahamas, that this will now open the door and be the springboard for other things that, and other artists and other great Bahamians that we should recognize in, in, in a more tangible way. Joseph Spend, the virtuoso from Small Hope, airs Sunday at 4 p.m. and Monday at 8 p.m. on RTV. I really want to thank uh, uh, RTV for seeing the value in this and telling you know these Bahamian stories because I think there's a lot of history out there that uh, you know that the people are passing away and not able to get what they have down on paper or photographs or or video or anything like that. So this is a good start. Reporting for our news, I'm. Thanks, Jillian. Well, a disappointing end to the season for John Cole Jones. Marcellus Hall has that and more tonight in sports. 
All right, thanks a lot, Christina. Now, going into the WNBA playoffs, it seemed nearly unthinkable that John Quill Jones and the Connecticut Sun would not find their way into the finals. After all, they had the best record, and they had the longest winning streak, the league's MVP, most improved player, and coach of the year. Turns out, sometimes the unthinkable does indeed happen. Do or die time for John Quill Jones and the Connecticut Sun down two games, one in the best of five with the Chicago Sky. Sun in desperate need of a victory to stave off elimination and the force of deciding game five. Sky, though, had different ideas. They led 32-26 at the end of the first quarter and would never look back. They go on to close out the series. 79-69 ends up being your final score. They win three games to one. John Quell, by far, her best game of the series. Came in a losing effort, 25 points, 11 rebounds, two assists, two steals, and two blocks. Doing her part, but again... The Sky with all the answers. Candace Parker, 17 points, 9 rebounds, 7 assists in this one. As they go on to advance to the WNBA Finals, a disappointing end to the year for John Quill Jones and the Connecticut Sun. Going in as the number one seed, they find themselves on the outside looking in. In some track and field news, Shawnee Miller-Webo is now the latest brand ambassador for Rev. Making the announcement earlier this week in Orlando, Florida at her training site. Shawnee talked about not only that, but also the upcoming World Championships. Yeah, I start training in, in another month, and um, I mean, I'm excited to, to get started for uh, Eugene uh, for the World Championships next year. Um, still working really hard for that world title, and so um, we're definitely going to be putting our foot forward and, and giving our very best for next season and, you know, just taking it one step further and hopefully, you know, doing some crazy things next year, uh, maybe world records or, you know, whatever may come my way, but, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just going to wait on God and whatever he has for me, it's, I'm just going to wait and take it. Meanwhile, another week of NFL action gets underway this evening with Thursday Night Football. L.A. Rams taking their 3-1 and one season record, second in the NFC West, Going up against conference rivals, the Seattle Seahawks, who are now 2-2 two and two on the air in third place. Both teams looking to continue their streaks. The Rams coming off a loss. Seahawks with a win last week. Both looking to see if they can continue to solidify their positions in that conference. And there it is, a check on sports. We'll give you full details from tonight's Thursday night football game coming up for you tomorrow, as well as some other things you may be interested in knowing. That's your check on sports. I'm Marcellus Hall. Back to you, Christina. Thanks, Marcellus. Still ahead, meet the new Miss Bahamas universe. Stay tuned. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. Welcome back to our news. More clouds move in. Greg is back in the Weather Center with the latest. Thanks again, Christina. Welcome back, everybody, for your second look at weather. Quiet in the tropics. Once again, we have that high-pressure system dominating our weather, keeping us almost cloud-free. Uh, nice conditions, still warm. Low-pressure system to the north, the National Hurricane Center still watching that, not really giving it much of a chance for formation. About a 20% chance before it merges with the frontal boundary across the southeast United States and move out towards the uh, north. Tropical wave approaching the Leeward Islands. That one is not showing much in terms of any organization. Another one off the coast of Africa continuing to move towards the west, also not showing much in terms of any organization at this time. Beaching and boating forecast for all areas tonight to tomorrow, your winds will be out of the east, still a little breezy, easterly 15 knots, sea three to five feet. High tide will be at 917 tonight. Here's a look now at your national forecast. A look now at your extended forecast through Tuesday. Frontal boundary expected here by the weekend. Could see a couple of showers, maybe even an isolated thunderstorm. Back to you, Christina. Thanks, Greg. 27-year-old Chantelle O'Brien was crowned Miss Bahamas Universe on Sunday, beating out three other contestants. Her victory was the culmination of several years of preparation. Jared Higgs has that. From growing up in Anglerston 
to being crowned Miss Bahamas Universe, Chantelle O'Brien is the nation's premier beauty queen. O'Brien was crowned on Sunday in a competition featuring three other contestants. It wasn't her first time competing either. She was first runner-up in Miss Bahamas Universe in 2013 at the age of 19, second runner-up in Miss World Bahamas a year later, and the winner of Miss World Bahamas in 2015. Those events preparing the 27-year-old for her big moment on Sunday. It was a moment of just gratitude and humility because it's been six years in the making since my formal title as Miss World Bahamas 2015. And so to see me be able to evolve and to see the judges see that in me, it just was amazing. Our News interviewed O'Brien at her studio on Farrington Road. The pageant winner, who doubles as a coach, says the road to the title was difficult. During the pandemic, she and her mother faced eviction, a story she shared during the question and answer portion of the show. That even in that difficulty, there's always been some kind of maintenance and sustainability for me with the support of my church family, my friends, and just people who've been able to believe in me and my goals. O'Brien describes herself as a movie lover, especially horror movies, although she admits she's never seen The Lion King. The 27-year-old traveled to China when she won Miss World Bahamas. And in December, she will head to Israel for the Miss Universe competition. Her platform during her most recent competition, Youth Development. She's calling on government and members of the public to continue to throw their support behind pageants. Gone are the days where it's just about seeing a beautiful woman in a nice dress. Now we are at the time where they're looking for that woman who has a resume, who's been doing work within her community, who is educated, and who has a passion for different things and for people. And so now we need the support of the government, the support of the Bahamian public to say, you know what, we're not just going to wait for you to do well. We're going to support you from the inception so that when you do do well, we knew that we all did it together. Reporting for Our News, I'm Jared Higgs. Thanks, Jared, and thank you for joining us for Our News tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Christina Dragovich. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Stay tuned for a new episode of On the Record with Jerome Sawyer. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.